If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, yeah, you. Adam, myself, and our poor sick friend, Justin, start off the episode with our intro conversation. Uh, first, we talk about Amazon Go. These are these new grocery stores with no employees. You walk in and out uh, in very quick time and get great products. Sounds fantastic. Your jobs are gone. We talk about the minimum wage because uh, it segued right into that wonderful political conversation. I'm sure you'll enjoy that one. <laughs> We've been getting political lately. Oh, it's oh, fun. Do that a lot we now. talked into automation and the future of low-skill jobs. There probably is none. Uh, we talked about adapting or dying uh, and when the robots take over. That'll be fun. Yeah. We talked about religion and spirituality. Wow, this episode. Skynet. This Great episode transitions here, I feel like. like. Crazy. Just makes sense to go in that flow. Uh, yeah, it's, I, it's a timeline We right mentioned there. lion's mane and chaga, which are two mushrooms with incredible benefits. Now, we are sponsored by Four Sigmatic, which produces uh, some of the best mushroom-based uh, supplements you can find. We are sponsored by them. If you go to Four Sigmatic, you spell four, F-O-U-R, and Sigmatic is... S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C dot com forward slash mind pump. If you enter the code mind pump without a space, you're going to get a massive, massive discount. We also mentioned the Juve light. We haven't talked about that light in a long time. It's a red I light took it. therapy. Yeah. Adam is I noticed it was missing. Adam's shining it on his skin, yep. on his scalp, and on his balls. And he's seeing some interesting effects. In fact, his jack and balls. If you DM him, if you DM him, he'll send you a picture That's of all right. of those. I hang in till the end. There, you guys will find out about Is my it balls. Is red? Uh, by the way, uh, we actually have a huge discount set up with Juve. If you go to Juve.com, that's a great transition right there. I know. J O O. If you go to J O O V V dot com forward slash mind pump and then enter the code mind pump, they're going to give you a huge discount on these red lights. Um, and then we also did some unboxing. <laughs> From Thrive Market. Justin got a bunch of brand new products, most of them soap. Lots of brawner. Because he's filthy. I'm, I'm a big brawner fan. If you go to thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump, here is what you will get one month free membership, $20 off your first three orders of $49 or more, and free shipping. And then we get into the questions. Before we get into the questions, make sure you hook these people up with the apps, Sal. Oh, dude, we have a mind pump app now. <laughs> yes. If you go to the app store, and you look up the Mind Pump app, you will be able to access our podcast much easier. You'll be able to look up different topics. You might even be able to message. I think you can send messages soon, through. Soon we're going to be able to do push notifications, stay in touch with everybody. We'll add stuff like we're YouTube. This is the beginning of the app that everybody's been asking for. And when you search, you search under Mind Pump Media. Media. Mind Pump Media. It's free for now. Get in there while it's hot. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, what's better, brown rice or white rice? Hmm. Uh, sounds like racism. Yeah. Next question. Yeah, why do we have to say that? I don't know. Yeah. Do we agree with some of the popular figureheads in fitness that say, you know, overtraining doesn't really exist. All you got to do is eat more. They're fat too. <laughs> the next question was, is it a myth or fact that we store testosterone in our legs and that when you do squats and deadlifts, it pushes that testosterone out of your legs? Yeah, mainly my third leg. It's been <laughs> working for me. <laughs> to the rest... <laughs> Of your body. Lots of testosterone in there. This yeah. poor individual. Maybe that was the legs he was talking Big about. Yeah. Yeah. This poor person <laughs> That's has what I figured. zero concept of basic human biology. So we answer that question. Uh, and finally, last question. Uh, what is our opinion of clean meat? No, it's not the porn section on Pornhub that Justin found yesterday. Yeah. We're actually talking about meat that's grown in the lab. You guys should check it out. So in other words, stem cells in a lab turned into meat for consumption what do we think about it also sounds yummy this month we're giving away t-shirts with the enrollment of any of our bundles that's but, coming to an end right now by this is it's coming soon it's going to end soon and i don't know about you guys but i'm getting i got yesterday over a thousand dms whoa a thousand Holy shit, over so. one thousand dms or 10 something like that yeah. from people who sounds got more reasonable some of our free shirts and had mystical experiences mystical yes a guy put our shirt on talked to god another person uh was an alcoholic stopped drinking alcohol uh another woman 
you know, she put the shirt on, she uh, grew a cup size in her breast. All kinds of miracles wow. are happening with these t-shirts. That's all, amazing. It's like a burning bush shirt. All kinds of miracles are happening with these t-shirts, and we're just giving away for free because we don't give a fuck. That's right. All you got to do to get the shirt is enroll in one of our bundles. Now, our most popular bundle, by the way, all that stuff I said earlier was bullshit. Our most popular bundle is our MAPS Super Bundle. Somebody believed you. Uh, Super Bundle is only for serious people. So if you're one of those people that's not very serious, you don't really want to get in shape, you can go ahead and fast forward. I'm talking to you serious people right now. You know, you people who want to change the way you look, who want to really get stronger. You don't want to fuck around. Want to get ripped. That's what Justin wants to change too. Want to get super sexy. The not fuck around plan. It's the MAPS Super Bundle. It's one year of exercise programming. Basically, you don't got to worry about anything. It's all done for you. We did it all for you. All you got to do is follow the instructions, okay? That's all you got to do is connect the dots and get fit. It takes a year because that's how long it actually takes. We're not going to lie to you, but it's all planned out. MAPS Super Bundle, and you get a free Mystical Magical t-shirt, limited edition, this month only, mindpumpmedia.com. I'm proud of Justin for being a trooper. Thanks, man. Pooper trooper. Yeah, well, we got to, man, we're about to fly off to Austin, man. We got a lot of stuff Head back up. out. Is, is it been over a year since we went to On It? How long ago was I it? I feel we, like it. it How long ago was it when we went to On It? It's got to be at least a year. We've been out there twice now or just once? Twice because of paleo effects. You're right. Yeah. Oh, that's right. So I well, think that was actually early this year. That was Paleo May. FX was April or thought, May? Yeah, April and May. So it's actually been longer than that since we went to On It. So we went, yeah. to, well, I mean, obviously we stopped by the boys, said hi to them yeah. at Paleo but FX. But it wasn't, we weren't like there. Like right. Yeah, we weren't so hanging out it's been it. over a year since we went to On It Academy to go. Because I think, so now that our boy Kyle is head of human optimization, right? That's what, what's the director of human optimization? I don't know. He's got an interesting title. Let, yeah. me, look, let me look him up real quick. He's is. got a badass title now. It's yeah. the director of human optimization. Yeah. Let's see here. I'm going to ask Doug if Doesn't he can, say. I want a better title for Doesn't what we're say. doing. <laughs> I just host. Yeah. yeah. Kyle, host. Kyle's one of those guys. Host. He's one of those few individuals that you probably will never meet. That is like the super nice, peaceful. I love that dude. Guy who can kill you. Yeah, very easily. Not a lot Choke of guys. You. Not a lot of very guys easily. have we allowed just to come into our little circle to the point where he's, you know, he spent the night with us. I feel like when yeah. you you enter a a he new spent the night at a house, new ring, but he spent the night with you. Yeah, you enter a new ring of friendship with Crawled me in. when you spend the night, like kids. Like kids? Yeah, you know when you're a kid and your friend yeah. sleeps over? Yeah, yeah. You, to not me, like kids are sleeping to over. To me, you can't call someone <laughs> yeah. a best friend or Michael even Jackson. a really good friend until they spent the night at your house. That's That was true when it's we like were friend, kids. It's like that friend code. Part of you remember that shit? It, you right? know? Yeah, yeah, I've only had, uh, there's only several people that's ever slept over my house. I wasn't a big sleepover dude when I was a kid. That's Ooh. another another way of saying that is you, you didn't have a lot of friends, too. Wow, no, so I had tons. <laughs> that's sad. I had so many. Yeah. I had the most. <laughs> I had the most. No, I only had, uh, let me see. You didn't have all the cool toys. My to cousin show. slept over. It was always family, actually. I had a lot of cousins my age, so I never really had like school friends sleep over because why? You know yeah. what I mean? Well, because you didn't have a lot of friends. I, it's I had, okay. I mean, yeah. I never I had family. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, my family loved me. That's just said to me. Yeah, I had a good my family. My family loved me, Adam. That's, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> Did, hey, you, did you have a lot of friends sleep over? I did. They did? I did a lot of sleeping over at other friends' house, too, yeah, because my, too. my house was so chaotic, you know, not to get all dark on people and stuff like that, but because there was a lot of fighting, a lot of bullshit in my house, any chance I could spend the night at friends' house. I was the friend. I, did, I pulled that maneuver, which I think I've talked about on the show before, where I'd be calling my friends up, like, hey, ask your mom if I could spend the night, dude. Call your mom up, ask her if it's cool if I could stay the night. You know, so I was always trying to stay the night somewhere else. Not to, I mean, other than just the, the fighting part of, of my family growing up, but we didn't have a lot of cool stuff either. So I had friend, a lot of my friends were, were uh, on the other side of the tracks. Yeah. So they had, they had all the cool toys, mm. the latest and greatest Nintendo or what was yes. cool or basketball hoops. Baseball. I was always trying to squeeze in some Zelda. Yeah, man. Yeah. So oh like, shit. I'm that's like, right. Yeah. There was a few of my friends that had it and we didn't have it yet. And we had like the Atari Two th- or one thousand? Is that what it was? Yeah. It's a twenty one hundred. Yeah, before before then, uh, the NES came out, and it was like it took forever for me to get it. So I was like staying at everybody's house that had it that I could. Dude, man. we used to play Super Contra. That was the game. Oh, Remember that? 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 And you do yes. the Konami code, the yeah. up, 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 down, 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 down yeah. left, right, right, left, right. Yeah. Yeah. Like B A B. How start. weird is that? That so <laughs> yeah. this is before, obviously before the internet, but everybody knew it. Like everybody got that code. Like things spread, they still spread regardless. Now it's the internet's different, right? You look it up and 
you find it. But yeah, it's funny too how you memorize those things. They have different. They have a different name for that. What do they call it? Mods and what did my little brother? I heard him saying something. There's there's terminal. I'm like was a gamer for a long time, but now like I just don't even understand the terminology they use for oh, yeah. ha- game hacks. The kids and they get all mad now because like you get all these mods ahead of it going into it. So all these kids like buy mods for their character and stuff, and they go in. So like some people don't even buy the game because they're like, yeah, you know, they're coming in with all these extra powers and all this stuff, you know, and like dominating. Yeah, gaming's changed ch- changed a lot. Pretty funny. Uh, you guys see in the news recently with uh, Uber. What they they acquired um, Ando A N D O I believe is a company. It's a uh, uh, Uber Eats. Yes, yes, dude. Uber Eats. Okay, projected to do three billion dollars in revenue. So is this where you order food and they go pick it up for yeah, you? Yeah, it's just like it's. A, there's a lot of services that do that right yeah. now. Right? But they're, they're this year they will overnight become the biggest in the world. Mm-hmm. Uber Eats is going to surpass uh, Uber Drive or Uber Rides or whatever it's called. So Ando, so, explain, like that was a company that already like made their own food. Is that what I Right, so read? they were already like a, what's the, DoorDash is what we use DoorDash, here, right? Yeah. DoorDash is a company that we use locally. So Ando was another company like that. They were actually like a restaurant delivery service without a brick and mortar restaurant. And they were really successful and good at what they did. So uh, Uber was already working as a partnership with them. They ended up acquiring them. And rumor has it that this is one of many to come. This is uh, Uber's big play against Amazon and Whole Foods and Amazon getting into this. Oh, this is so great. Right. I love this. Have you seen DC too? Like an Amazon actually launched their uh, go store. Yeah, the ghost Dude. are up in Seattle. So, so I've, I been ta- re- I've been reading about it. I, I talk- like I'm waiting for this I to talked happen. about this oh. like fucking six months ago, and Sal yeah. sent over a thing like, "Dude, check this all out." I'm like, "Bro, <laughs> I shared this already." So I was reading an article about it, and people were being interviewed as they were going in there, and it's like you're in and out in 30 seconds. My There's the- nothing. My theory is they're going to convert all the Whole Foods to that. Dude, that'd be the easiest transition. Is so they 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 opened up the goes. This is what I think. This and this is purely speculation. I don't know for sure, but from all the articles that I've read, the books that I've read in this field, I love this stuff. <laughs> I think that what's happening is Amazon's big move was the whole food purchase. We know that. We see them trying to drop prices and make smart strategies like you brought up with the water the other day. The next big transition, I think, and that was the whole point of running these Amazon Go stores, make sure they're successful, get all the kinks out. And then I think we're going to see either this year or next year them roll out mm-hmm. uh, the Amazon Amazon Go stores Will now be what Whole Foods? Whole Foods. I think yeah. you'll just put the put the system in place. It only makes sense. And I, plus, dude, it, it needs to happen. I mean, have you guys been to like Safeway or you know? Oh my god! Like I just want to shoot myself sometimes. Mm. With some oh, if you go checkers. to prime, if you go to prime hours, like around like, five o'clock. Come on, dude. It's it's a matter of time. It's a matter of yeah. time for a, a few no different reasons. There's no need for it anymore. It's here's the thing that people need to understand about what is gonna happen there's really no no way around this it's gonna happen low skilled jobs uh are going to be replaced and the more we and we can only accelerate it by create by raising uh, minimum wage laws i know now that's that's the irony in all of this is the people that vote for minimum wage going off they're just accelerating the inevitable they are eliminating jobs right it's almost like it's you're robbing peter to pay paul right now it's like you're you're asking for something to go up so you can make a dollar more an hour because it it sounds like a good idea for you because maybe you're a checker for whole foods but you're only going to be a checker for whole foods for maybe another year now and we need to be clear like to be very clear if we don't raise minimum wage it doesn't mean that it's still not going to happen it's going to happen technology is going to replace or you know it's going to create so much efficiency that it's going to be it's not going to make any sense to have a human do a low skill type of I'll job I'll tell you what though so they're going to be gone here's where I disagree with that it, it wouldn't if we did allow to pay people four dollars an hour if they were if here's, here's the thing right so imagine you're you're not Whole Foods but you're you're in the grocery store market mm-hmm. maybe you're in a small town and maybe your theory is that I still there's there's something about the personable side of a grocer checking you out. So it would be nice as a store owner if I had the ability to offer jobs to people that may may not be qualified to get ten, fifteen, twenty dollars an hour jobs, but I could pay them five dollars an hour. Now we can still give this like 
you know, customer service feel. For five bucks an hour? Right. No, no. No, that, no I know it's not possible. It's not, I'm not saying it's not possible, It's but it, part of the reason why it's not possible is because we've driven the minimum wage laws up. Had you still, if that didn't exist, you still would let it, it still would be competitive for somebody who could do that. But when you drive the, the minimum wage up that high as a store owner, now you have to do the math of, okay, I have 10 cashiers that work for me at an average of... 200 something hours per week what does that look like it's, on my I mean it, it is inevitable I don't care if there's yes raising minimum wage laws for sure is accelerating the inevitable when you're going to cost 15 bucks an hour to employ you now the cost of a machine to do it doesn't have to be super cheap. It just has to be cheap. That's what I mean. If now. you were paying them four or five dollars, it's not necessarily. But it's still, it's still going to happen. It's still going to happen, and it's inevitable. But it could be something that takes ten or twenty years right. to get there. Versus like companies now will be forced to look at this. It's it's. I remember. Okay, so the CEO of Twenty Four Hour Fitness, Carl Liebert, who was after Mark Mastroff came in. And this was their vision for 24 Hour Fitness because he came from Home Depot. He was responsible; for that. he was the CEO to bring in the self checkout. Oh, so he was that was brilliant. His, Love it. Yeah, he was the self checkout model guy who brought CEO who brought that mm-hmm. to Home Depot and was the big turnaround there. He and that was part of why 24 Hour Fitness brought him on board there because that was the evolution of how they did sales and check in, sure. and they wanted to eventually, sure. which is actually a good lesson. In understanding that that works well for some industries, works terrible for others. Again, going to my point, this is what I meant by if you can't tell me that if minimum wage was more competitive or meaning that it didn't exist and I could pay somebody whatever. Whatever someone was willing. It's obviously voluntary. Yes, right. Whatever somebody was willing to work for and I'm this small mom pa chain. You know, it might make sense for me to keep, you know, four or five of these cashier employees that pay I pay low door, but I found them and they're they're passionate about what they do and maybe they have the they have an old they have a record and so they can't get a really good job, but they really want to try and contribute to society now and so So here's what I so here's the get thing where I'm going with I do, this. I totally get where you're going. I understand your rationale, but here's the thing. Uh people don't if people want that kind of service for from a grocery store where they go in and talk and meet with someone that individual is going to have a higher level of skill. They're not going to work for five bucks an hour. And it's a different environment altogether. Now I'm going to a... We're using now arbitrary going to, numbers right now, too. No, I'm I hear, not saying four or five What I'm saying is in the grocery store market, for the most part, uh, people just want their product and they want fast. They want to get the fuck in and fuck out. Now, when you go to a gym, uh, some people want that and that model does exist, but some people also want people there who know what they're doing to help them, which is why fitness is a little different. But at the end of the day, low-skilled jobs are going to disappear. Now, what people don't, what people need to understand is that does not mean we now have less jobs. That's not at all what it means. In fact, if jobs- It, free, are, it frees up opportunity for that company to grow and do other things and provide more jobs. Not just that, but right. it's the unknown. It's the unseen. Like, you have if if a company can create an environment or a business like these Amazon grocery stores where you go in, check in and out, and they're saving money. We've now increased efficiency, which now increases wealth. Opportunities explode from that, which is why today, even though you know if most jobs from a hundred years ago don't exist anymore, but obviously today it's much more uh, it's much better off, more wealth, there's more opportunities. But the bottom line is these, these low skilled jobs are just not going to, they're not going to exist. And and if you want them to disappear faster, all you got to do is arbitrarily raise the cost of them up with some, you know, bullshit, you know, economic fairyland laws, like a minimum wage where here, let's just invent the fucking value of this job because we think we want to help people. When in reality, what you're doing is you're destroying wealth, destroying efficiency, and you're hurting the very people that you think you're helping. It just sounds good in politics, but it's it's a very it's a it's a very exciting, interesting mm-hmm. future, and we are entering into a time where the low skill type stuff is is going to be replaced by robots, and you're going to need more high skill, you know, employees or employee for for different jobs. This is why here in Silicon Valley, you know, uh, the people get paid so much for tech. It's not because part of the reason why is there's not a lot of supply. Like there's not a lot of labor to do this stuff. Like if you're a company, do you know how much money these tech companies spend on recruiting 
just to find talent because it's so hard to find talent. Well, it's so competitive. It's so co- so they have to offer a shit ton of money and yeah. benefits, and they have to offer free massages and food. If you go on Google Campus, it's like they, they do everything but jerk you off just because they're trying to attract you because there's so little of people like you. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So it's very very interesting. There's also this is another good one. I actually was watching this video on uh, China. And a lot of people think that companies like Apple go to China because labor's cheap. That's actually not true. China's labor is not really cheap anymore. China just has a lot of fucking people yeah. who are very specialized with what they do. So if you need the kind of people who can operate the machinery and the tools to make these phones, which is a very specific set of skills, it's high <coughs> skill, it's still high skill. It's a very specific set, though, of these high skills. There is a very big shortage here in the U.S. Like if, the, if Apple wanted to open up a place to make iPhones here, they wouldn't be able to find enough people. Just, just think, not, this is why I believe- That's when, why they go to China. When Apple yeah. and Facebook and Google University all comes out, bro, it's going to be a game changer. It has to be. Right? It has to be because- What the, a game changer that was. The factory, limiting factor- They'll have, yeah. Different you would just you would Think of it just campus. like when you went to college and you had all these different you know, uh, expertise or degrees that you could go towards. Oh, yeah. You're absolutely. going to have this lit, and it's all job opportunities for the, for these companies. It would be awesome to see them all combine forces and then provide this badass the, the place, best, but the best it would probably thing, be individual. The best thing we can do is get out of the way and don't uh, stop creating false barriers- uh, with the market, stop creating this bolt. You know, where we're trying to protect people. In reality, what we're doing is we're slowing down the process because it will. What'll happen, and what happens in, in markets when they're like this, is the is it becomes a, a market where employers are fighting over talent. That becomes the limiting factor. You know, how awesome that is. Yeah. Now, maybe tough for a business because you're now you're trying to grow and you're like, holy shit, there's not enough people. We have the money, we have the, but we just don't have the people. But holy shit, if you're trying to get a job, you know how nice it is mm. to go to different employers and then be like, who's going to pay me the most? Which one do I want to, and have them bid on you? That is a very real reality in fields like tech that innovate so quickly because they're so unregulated in many ways. Like tech grows so quickly. Shit, man, I was, what was I looking at the other day? There was a, an ad, that's what it was. It was a um, an ad from, I don't know, early 1980s from uh, Radio Shack, which, uh, do they exist still? Does they Radio do. Shack? Yeah, barely, but they do. And it was a cell phone. Remember the old cell phones? It was like a huge brick, and then <laughs> yeah. there was like a cable that attached to a briefcase. Hmm. The price in the ad- The not, Gordon Gecko special. Bro, the price in the ad, not even adjusted for inflation, was like $800. Yeah. So this is like 1983. If you want this cell phone, which was shit, and all it could do is make phone calls, and it didn't really work that well- and it was massive and expensive. It was huge, huge briefcase and big old brick on you. So you ain't hiding that thing anywhere. That would have cost you in those dollars $800. Yeah. Yeah. Today, if you want a phone that just makes phone calls, that's all it does. You don't want a smartphone anything. Yeah, for like a dollar. You, br- br- you get, they'll get people to throw them away. Yeah, they'll give them away. Free. Yeah. How awesome is that? That's crazy. crazy. It's fucking awesome. That's dude. why I don't really, tr- when people trip out on like that, the iPhone X and stuff, how expensive it is. Oh, it's so overrated. And it's inflated somewhat, but that's because we've talked about this before. Sure. Apple is a luxury brand, but it still has replaced my <coughs> my laptop, my desktop, and any way that I Everything. Can. Yeah, everything. <clears throat> I Bro, literally work from my phone all day long. Never. Bro, think about it this way. A, uh, a billionaire from, or the, the richest man in the world 150 years ago, Okay, the rich. Think of I don't know who it is. I don't know Rockefeller, just ridiculous wealth, incredible amount of money. Does did not and could not have the tools, access, information, and whatever that a you know lower middle class person would have today. They just didn't have it. Didn't exist. Right. All the money in the world. That's a cool way to put it. All the money in the world, and they could not have what your you know typical high school kid has with their just fucking smartphone. Yeah. How awesome and crazy is, is crazy. that? So every well, single industry is affected. Everything. And like, that's so why- Retail, pe- you know, like I, I was talking to somebody else, like it, you you see a lot of people afraid of this change, you know, like different it's like scary. industries where they're, you know, they're mom and pop shops or they're like, you know, they're dealing in retail, they're dealing with, you know, products that, that you know, they're competing now with Amazon coming in and then just like offering it. It's just- it's kind of crazy, and it and it makes you kind of wonder, like how they're going to survive or or what they're going to do to shift, and and they really need to think about. What that. happens is when you're and we've seen this happen 
throughout all of history. And you can go to different countries and see where people have uh, tried to implement this. But what happens through all, all of history is innovation or technology or something comes and it starts to feel threatening to the to the people who are doing whatever you know job. So if I'm you know, if I'm, uh, you know, if I'm making a product, if I'm making, I use this example all the time, but if I'm making wagon wheels and all of a sudden I see this new invention called an automobile, like I'm terrified because my skill is in making wagon wheels. And if this automobile takes off and everybody starts getting this and instead and stops getting horses and, and buggies, like I'm fucked. Now, if there's enough of me, what they do is we will go to our, our government and we will lobby them and say, Hey, we need to protect our jobs. We are going to lose our jobs. We're going to if we don't if we lose our jobs, everybody's fucked. There's a there's an and we'll vote for you if you help us. And then what they do is they they pass laws to protect those jobs. And in reality, what they do is they stifle innovation. innovation yep. They reduce efficiency. And what we don't see, which isn't as clear, it's the unseen. What they call in economics is this destruction of progress and wealth. Where if we just let that stuff happen, are there going to yeah, be... Yeah, but you say that. Remember I told you the other day, this is the part where that's such a catch-22 or what a conundrum to be in where you have, you know, thousands of employees. You've, you know, this has been... in the, My dad started this business mm-hmm. 70 years ago and I'm carrying it on 30 and my employees are like my family. And you know what? We've been making the wood wheel for fucking mm-hmm. 100 years now and in comes, well, you know... It's like a taxi company. Well, yeah. And they yeah. come in and you got you to ask yourself like... So there's a, there's a part of me that... Uh, I totally agree, and I'm like, I get frustrated too. Like, let progress happen. You're only hurting us long term. Yeah, but you're empathizing with the other side, right? So can I, right? So can I. I can only imagine how I what mean, a difficult decision well, that dude, has to be. Like, we yeah. were pers- we were in the gyms for a long time, right? Personal trainers. I mean, I, this is probably not going to happen for <laughs> for any in the near future. So I'm sure this will take a while. But let's just imagine that some company invents ridiculous artificial intelligence, and it's a robot. And it's indistingu- indistinguishable from a human, and it's a personal trainers, and they're gonna do it for ten bucks an hour, and they're fucking good, and they're motivational. Yeah. And here I am now in a gym. I mean, that's threatening. Yeah, you know, that's just scary. So I can empathize with that. But what we need to do is look at the whole and say to ourselves, like, is that really what it's all about, or is it that? I mean, what what do humans do? What do we do? What makes us? What separates us for us from the animals? Right. Is that we progress. And we progress off of each other's progress, not off of our own. I did not enter this world and invent everything around me. I entered this world and there was all this awesome shit already. And if I want to innovate in whatever and grow, I can add on top of that. And it just... And it just continues to grow, grow, grow. Also, grow. why it's so important that you're always evolving in your business, right? That's, and always searching for that it, blue man. water. Because, you know, if you get caught just enjoying the ride in business, it's real easy. That's when somebody else comes up and gobbles. That's why when up. people tell me, they'll say something yeah. like, oh, aren't you afraid that uh, there's going to be no jobs, that AI is going to do everything? And I, I, whenever someone says that to me, I, 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 re- I try to like rephrase it to them. It's okay. So what you're saying is there's a future. Where machines do everything for us. Like that sounds like utopia. That sounds like heaven to me. That sounds pretty fucking cool. <laughs> you can work out and just like read. That yeah. sounds pretty fucking awesome. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that, that. That sounds like a cool future, if you ask me. And uh, will it p- pose incredible challenges on humans? Well, I think so. I don't think we've ever been in a situation where mm. we didn't have to do anything. And will that be difficult for a lot of people? I think so. I, I know a lot of people when they retire become depressed or get really sick because now they have they don't have any meaning so i think it'll totally reframe you know what what you know humanity like okay well now what's my meaning Where's if i don't have place? to yeah. what, if i don't have to do anything everything's provided to me like do we just become apathetic you know lazy fools or we just become idiots or or do we become star travelers <laughs> or do we <laughs> that's I mean, or where do i'm something? at Speaking well, of, if you talk to Elon, he would say that for sure. Fuck yeah. Out. So speaking of which, so I've been doing a lot of reading on. This is some pretty interesting stuff. I don't want to go too far on it because I know we're going to end up going deep with this. But there's this. Uh, there's been this debate for a while that the brain, the human brain, is hardwired for mystical experiences. In fact, they can simulate a godlike mystical experience in your brain in a laboratory and we know that psychedelic drugs and stuff like that will do that also to people and we know that you know the reason why religion has so much power and why it's existed for so long is it does that i find it fascinating because 
is it hardwired into our brains because it we evolved and it helped us, or is it hardwired into our brains because there really is something out there? There really is something mm. driving us. No, that's the big that's the big question, right? right? It's it's really fascinating. It's really fascinating. Well, that's sort of the divide between, you know, somebody that believes or doesn't, right? Well, you know, there's the whole like, where does morality come from? Where do we where do humans derive our idea of morals? And did that create religion or was it the belief in all these other things that then created that morality? Is that what yeah, separated the chicken us? Or the egg. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of scientists that think it was the it was the the religion. It was those breakthroughs and those beliefs in things like an afterlife. And like we take it for granted now, but imagine if you're you know, a, a primitive ape or whatever, and, and you all of a sudden have the concept, have this concept of, well, when I die, I still exist. Like there's something beyond that or whatever. Or when this person dies or this, what, there's something beyond that. That's breakthrough thought. It's very, very fascinating. Very interesting. Did you start the series with Jordan Peters yet? Have you started that a yet? A little bit. You did? A little bit. Yeah. So I'm kind of getting into it. I find it fascinating because I've known how important, um, religion is to, uh, just to just, so when I, so I went through this whole process myself where I grew up in a Catholic family and then I totally rejected it because it was really easy to see the, the hypocrisy and contradictions of modern religion. It's very easy to see some of the bad mm-hmm. stuff that they've done. Um, and I'm talking about all the major religions, but, and so I became very atheist, very, very strong atheist. And then as I learned about evolution, I started learning about history. I started learning about you know, quantum physics and some of the weird stuff that happens there. I started to see that uh, and learn that uh, religion played such a important, it was like such a huge role in mankind's uh, evolution. It wasn't uh, like on accident. It was something that we needed to progress uh, as a people. And if you think about it, it's hung around for long, Mm -hmm. forever. Like, right? why would we need it now? And yet it's still quite powerful. It's very, very interesting. And so that made me move away from atheism and more towards being agnostic and being like, well, this is quite interesting. Like, why has this lasted for so long? And why do we seem primed to believe in these things? Right. You know? I, what, you know what I was fascinated with is, and I have been watching his stuff. I think after you sent that over last week, I have done like a super deep dive on him and am super pro getting him on the show. Uh, and so I hope that happens for everybody in the next month or so because probably one of the most compelling speakers that I've listened to ever, possibly. And one of the things I was really fascinated, I, I noticed I was first listening to his speeches and I could tell by a lot of the quotes and the analogies and some of the things he gave. I was like, this guy definitely has some biblical undertones. And then I started searching that with his name and realize, holy shit, he's done all kinds of great talks on this. Mm-hmm. He's got one that's got well over a million views. I have never in my life ever seen this. And YouTube is example, search it, tell me if you, or someone share with me if you've seen this before, a talk where I've seen as many atheists and Christian people comment positively about a speech. That is crazy to me. Yeah. How, how this man gave a talk for two and a half hours on, on the, the on bo- religion, yeah, on religion, on, yeah. right, and then w- was able to speak to both Christian minds and atheist minds positively. That blew my mind. Yeah, that's I, how powerful that that talk I, is. I think if you're um, an objective, if you're objective when you speak, and you're uh, you know you're trying to be objective, you're trying to be accurate, you're trying to be and be honest. I think you can do that. I think it, nowadays it's hard to find people who are just totally honest. Regardless of what uh, you know, PC culture says. Regardless of who you think you may offend, you know, just be very clear, very honest, without a bias, without what looks like an ulterior motive. And the truth is powerful. You know what I'm saying? The truth is very powerful. And he, you know, I don't know all of his stuff, but I know when he speaks, he's just like it's not his opinion. He's like, hey, here's what everything says. No, the, the way he talks on on this subject, he he prefaces it with, listen, I, I'm not saying. Uh, I do or I don't believe here. But what I am in, I'm very fascinated, like what you said, with something that has been around for as long as it has, has been as impactful in our society, arguably probably one of the most impactful things It's ever. the root of uh, Christianity in particular, the Judeo-Christian yeah, Western religion. Western civilization. Is what's called, it's what the belief in, it's very unique now. I'm sure I'm going to piss people off, but whatever, this is true. Um, it, when you look at the roots of, Western society, Western society, 
which was very unique in, uh, the, um, among all societies, valued the individual and believed in what were known as, we call them liberties or inalienable rights. And they said they believed that because God created man, all people were born with these rights that were bestowed upon them by their creator. So it doesn't matter if you're a king, doesn't matter if you're you know, a ruler or a dictator or whatever, everybody has particular things that are bestowed upon them, particular rights, and they are they're yours. You don't you don't derive them from anyone else. So they're you're born with them. So like my uh, you know I can speak what I want to say. I should be able to believe what I want. I should be able to protect myself, you know, uh, against threats. Like these these are what are called rights, and they believe in the individual. And people don't realize just how powerful that philosophy is, and how right that philosophy yeah. is. That is a very that is not arguably that is a hundred percent the better philosophy. Now it hasn't been expressed perfectly, obviously. Right. Has, leave, it, leave it to humans to distort something and right. fuck it up. You that's know? right. But that philosophy is what caused Western society to elevate women to, you know, to uh, treat everybody <laughs> or to aim to treat pe- to treat people equally, even though it wasn't like that in the beginning. It's again, that's the philosophy that pushes that <clears throat> forward. Um, and it's uh, and you got to consider this. Like, look, George Washington wins the revolution, right? He was given uh, the throne. Literally, they they wanted to make him king. And he said, no, I don't want to be king. Now, any man would have said, yes, I'll take that. I'll be the king and I'll rule this and I can I, I can run things and I think I'm pretty fucking awesome. He said no because he believed in something much bigger than himself and he mm-hmm. believed in this philosophy of rights, of liberty, of the individual, um, which was derived from these these religious roots. So it's literally the, the, the foundation of right. – it doesn't mean you have to be religious or anything like that. It's just important to note that why would these men give up their power that they could have given, that they could have totally had if they did not believe in, it's because they believed in something much bigger than them. So that's, that's just an important thing to, uh, to note, and it's a very true thing. So anyway, I'm on fire right now. I had a little bit of that lion's mane for Sigmatic. <laughs> that shit always. Like do you guys feel like that when you take it? I don't take that one as I use chaga the most right now because of for, uh, your, for your skin. Yep. Is it working for you? Well, I mean, I'm doing so many things right now. The one thing that I, and I I didn't want to bring this up and you bring it you calling me out right now uh, because I still feel it's a little too early. But I'm noticing some real positive benefits on my psoriasis right now. But the biggest thing that I've changed, and I've been taking the chaga, I've been doing all my other stuff for my hormones, very consistent. The most consistent thing or the most uh, recent thing that I've added to the rotation and been more consistent, did you notice that I took the juve not too long ago? Oh, you've been doing that? So I'm every every morning and night, I'm using it. So what are you doing? Just like uh, 15, like 20 balls minutes? Or it's, like yeah, naked. I'm sitting, so I, thing. I've got it right next to my bed. So that was the main reason is I'm doing it for my testosterone, mm. but I'm actually seeing my psoriasis clean up. For oh, sure. Interesting. So that's what was really neat was I was doing it for the testosterone. You know that's thing. been well known that that helps. Right, us right, and I knew that right, but I just hadn't put the I hadn't put the regimen together to like test it to see if I'm seeing any benefits. And plus, I believe my diet has to be somewhat consistent for me to. Yeah, because not- you're doing a lot of things. You're doing right. Uh, you do chaga regularly, which we know that so that studies show that it helps with right. uh, with psoriasis. Tongue cat Ali, ashwagandha. That's all for testosterone. Then right. you you did the fast. Now you're keto. Yep. Then I'm like paleo now. I should paleo, say I'm keto. Okay. Yeah. And then you're doing the the, the light. It's right. fucking great. You know what I really like about that is that you're you're using all all the tools at your disposal that we've learned about since we've had this show, which is great. Mm-hmm. And it's fucking working. How yeah. great is that? Yeah. It is. And you know me, I'm the most probably the skeptical, or probably Justin and I are probably the most skeptical when it comes to things like this. And so I wasn't gonna bring it up, but since you asked, mm-hmm. um, yes, I've been using the chaga too. Yes, I've been seeing great benefits from all the things I'm I'm doing. Um, there has been, I have noticed a difference with my testosterone. Um, I, all, I noticed a huge difference in, in me being consistent or inconsistent with it too. So I had a couple of days where we traveled somewhere and I didn't have my, uh, all my testosterone stuff with me and, or hormones to libido stuff, whatever you want to call it, uh, with me. And so I noticed a dip right away. Mm. So I do notice that I have to be very consistent with, with using that, um, I can't say that I've seen a huge spike on the testosterone from the Juve Light yet, but I can say that I've seen a huge improvement on my skin in the short amount of time that I've been using it consistently. That's freaking great. I so, mean, the, mm-hmm. the cool thing about uh, plant herbs and stuff that have been used for a long, and again, you cannot, 
you know, I hate it when guy when uh, you know what scientists or you know PhDs or whatever will come out and be like, eh, it's herbal stuff. It's like, man, that shit's been around for thousands of years and been used for a long time yeah. for a reason. It would not be hanging around this long. Like lion's mane has been used for cognitive function to improve, like you know, your ability to think for thousands of years by Ch- for Chinese medicine, and now we finally have studies proving that it actually does benefit the brain. How funny is that? Mm, science how, always has to catch up yeah, later. How funny is that though? That like this thing's been used for thousands of years. It's in all these, you know, these writings and stuff. And we take it and we're like, let's see if this really works. And we start yeah. testing a lab and like, oh shit. So here's a cool one that I there was a 2012 study done in Malaysia that found that consuming lion's mane mushrooms could actually regenerate damaged cells from peripheral nerve injury. So this is an injury that affects like the delicate tissue between your brain and the spinal cord. That's fucking that's crazy. F- that's that's huge, dude. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what that. I mean, it could mean something huge, right? Because one of the you know one of the things that we've still struggle with doing, and stem cells are kind of cool on this, but still, we don't know what's going on. Somebody becomes paralyzed, or you lose you know you lose feeling in, in something because you have nerve damage, or people with neurological type disorders. That could be interesting study on something like lion's mane because it's already showing some benefits. So hmm. pretty cool stuff. Wow. We have a box. Oh, oh shit. But Who, this is not just any box. Which one is this one? This is Justin's box. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. My box. So let's hopefully see. there's some good stuff. Let's in see for if the he uh, Yeah, let's see if he ordered tampons like Sal did. I, I love Justin's box. Did you get I don't some, think so? Did you you didn't get any you, tampons? You don't get your orga- your girl the organic ones? <laughs> <laughs> I don't do any of that shopping. So let's see what's on <laughs> Justin's list. Let's see what you got from Santa. That looks like a bottle of alcohol. Probably. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Some whiskey. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Wow, God, they, that is, they, 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 they wrap. do not mess around, I tell you. Oh, it is oh, look at sealed that. tight. So what this is? is actually Thrive Market brand organic virgin olive oil. Got to oh. keep them virgins. You don't want to get them slutty Cold olive oil. extracted. Beautiful. Thank you, Doug. You know what? That's going to be on my list now too. After I saw that that article or that news thing that we just read and, and watched about the virgin virgin oil has been is one of the top ones that they they fuck with and manipulate. Yep. Like they say, organic mm. olive mix oil, in and they mix in veg- cheap ass. Yeah. Vegetables. No, if it's organic, it's more stringent. But if it's just like extra virgin olive oil, they found that they'll test a bunch of them, and like seventy yeah. percent of them have like soybean oil. Right. No, I'm always into olive oil, so this is good. And then we also have a Thrive Market brand natural home liquid laundry detergent. Have you used this yet, Justin? No, this I'm, no, this is the first time using the laundry yeah, detergent. Yeah, tell us when you're going through this because I'm I'm interested in stuff that you've used already or what's new to you. Yeah, I don't know if this had any scent to it or anything. It doesn't look like it. So free and clear biodegradable does formula. It, does it come in the pod so you can put it in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> I don't no. think so. Oh, man, I can't do a YouTube video of this. That's now, I bad. think you have really come to love Dr. Bronner's products, Justin. I do. I don't know what it is, but I just uh, like everything. I got my whole house set up with these Dr. Bronner uh, products. So you've used the one that Doug's giving you right now? Yeah, this is yes, the 18 in 1 Hemp pepper, Peppermint Pure Castile Soap. Oh, that's the one I use. I take a shower. It's excellent. That. I, that is, I've used yeah. it for years. Do you years. use it for body wash or is this for? For the body. Body wash. Oh, okay. Yeah. It Although smells I don't, I don't put it on my pee hole very often because it burns. But yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. Oh, it gives you like a little tingly. Yeah, yeah, it's peppermint, you know, <laughs> super fresh. I've done it before and it was not. Peppermint yeah. nuts. Get well, it's super nuts. concentrated. They yeah. put a ton of peppermint oil in It'll it. It'll go right in your pee hole. It's mm. not good. Now, this is another Dr. Bronner's product cinnamon all one toothpaste now, dude you should see if we yes. get sponsored by him that's Justin. the one i use I, we should i'm so, like a big fan so, so that's like a toothpaste with cinnamon yeah. uh-huh so okay it's like the toms that i get i've had the other yeah the other version too so and more dr bronner's like peppermint, peppermint mm-hmm. organic shaving soap yes what are you, jesus christ bro bro i told you it's all the bronners you I got know, a boner i've already got a boner used for bronner i've already used all the rest of them how's the have? shaving cream because yeah. i'm pretty picky about my shaving cream too well Here's the thing. It's like it comes on like a liquid, but right. then it foams up. So it's oh, not, it does foam up. It foams up a little bit. It's yeah. not foamy like air. It's not. Yeah, no. but it. But yeah, yeah. So. I like the foam. Oh, that looks like it looks like <laughs> foam, ghee right foam there. Foam gets me every time. Is that yeah. ghee? It is organic valley ghee. Ooh, what do you do with ghee, Justin? You put it on your vegetables. Yeah, yeah. And one more item here, wrapped up in a tight bundle. It's a pee hole protector for when you shower with Dr. <laughs> Bronner's peppermint oil. <laughs> a little rain put cap. My, what is? Oh, is it ashwagandha. 
Yeah, it's actually ashwagandha. Yeah, That's right. Ashwagandha. Good guess, Adam. Yeah. There you go, my buddy. Drops. I recognize that night. I recognize that bottle. Yeah. Beautiful. It tastes like shit. Works oh, well. Oh, God. You know what? I, I have my little Works thing. Works super well. I have to take a shot of water afterwards. You water. are the biggest. You cannot handle bad tasting. You anything. are a weirdo. You know what I think? I think you've oversaturated your system with all the fucking pills and powders you took for bro, so many I've years been, that yeah. you don't even recognize. Bro, rec- I used to blend. Like, taste does not matter. You here. think you're hardcore. You're not. I'm I not. used to fucking get a blender. Obviously, I'm not. No joke. Water, tuna fish, egg yolks, peanut butter. Drink it. I used to do that for a week. Never would you get Blah. peanut butter and tuna. Oh, that, oh. And you know, what's wrong with you? I don't fuck around, guys. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> Serious Some of us are willing to do what it takes. You know what? It just goes to show why you're so passionate about what we talk about. Because I would be yeah. so angry too if I was doing some shit like that for years. No, that doesn't oh, make yeah. me angry. Oh, man. <laughs> it makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> Bring on the questions, Doug. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. First question is from literally Annika. What's better, brown rice or white rice? So this is a great, by the way, she's got a great page. Uh, She travels all over the world. Some pretty cool pictures. So this is uh, a very good question because the answer seems obvious. But it's actually shocking. In fitness, we've been told for a long time that brown Brown rice rice is better because it's got, you know, what, more fiber, it's got more nutrients. White rice, they need to remove more of the rice, you know, whole or whatever the brand in order to consume it. So it's probably not as good. It's got a higher glycemic index, so it's going to affect your blood sugar better, this and that and the other. Here's the real deal now. First and foremost, not a big difference. If you can tolerate both, really doesn't matter. If you have gut issues or if you have any inflammatory issues. White is actually better. White is better. Mm. And this is because, and a lot of people don't realize, it's funny too, because I've been listening to, I listened to some podcasts with that carnivore guy. Oh, yeah. uh, The guy that just eats meat. Yeah. And uh, he makes a lot of, he's honest points. And that is that plants evolved uh, with uh, lots of predators. And plants can't run away and they can't really defend themselves like predators can. They don't have claws. They don't have teeth. They don't have feet. So the way that plants, one way that plants defend themselves is they start to create uh, these compounds in them that make them hard to digest, that make them uh, where you consume them and you get an immune reaction. Mm -hmm. Lots of plants have these. Now, if wheat is like that, like if you grab wheat and just ate it, uh, it would fuck you up pretty bad. So we've, humans have learned how to process wheat and do all these different things to wheat so that we can digest it. And ancient people actually took a long time to make wheat. You know, they had to ferment it. Mortar and, different... and pestle and That's all it. that stuff. Yeah. And lots of plants have these things. This is why if you eat a whole bunch, one of the reasons why you eat a whole bunch of raw broccoli, you're more likely to have an upset stomach than if you cook the hell out of it. Cooking vegetables and things breaks those things down and makes them more digestible. This is why certain foods tend to have, uh, you know, tend to be more uh, or cause more immune problems in people. And rice is one of these things. If you have gut issues or if you have issues with digestion, you're, the odds that you'll have trouble digest, digesting and assimilating brown rice are much higher than they are with white rice. I'm one of those people. I can have brown rice, uh, but I can't consume a lot of it like I can with white rice. White rice doesn't, doesn't bother me at all. I can eat a lot of it, mm-hmm. and it's just much easier to digest, to digest. Brown rice, on the other hand, starts to bother me. The other thing, too, is brown rice contains compounds which are known as anti-nutrients. These compounds actually block or reduce the absorption of certain minerals in the body and in some cases can cause mineral deficiencies, which is why in lots of countries throughout the world, especially countries that consume a lot of rice, they historically don't consume brown rice. They all consume 
white rice, including the old, you know, so uh, Eastern European, uh, that, Eastern. That was like mind blowing to me when you talked about that, like a year or two ago, I remember we covered this topic and it was just like the anti-nutrient, mm-hmm. like it, it, it was so professed that this was, you know, it, it's definitely brown rice. The irony too, even the things that Sal did say on the positive side of brown rice too, are very minimal. So when you talk That's about right. the low glycemic index, you talk about calories, things like that, it's actually fucking a nutrient difference. You're talking about splitting hairs. I mean, Flip the label around on the back of a white rice. rice tastes better anyway. Yeah, yeah, they're almost exactly the same, and I believe the glycemic index difference is a couple points. It's, it's not, nothing. Yeah, it's not like a seventy on the glycemic index and then like a thirty. It's like it's fifty six and fifty eight. You know, it's and, so and, close. And guess what? If you have a, even a mild uh, reaction to brown rice, if you have a mild intolerance to it, your blood sugar is going to spike like crazy anyway. Because right, right. whenever the body senses stress, the liver tends to shoot out uh, sugar. This is why, uh, you know, they've done these studies where they have people wearing these uh, continual glucose monitors that measure your glucose uh, in real time. Mm -hmm. And some people will have like a blood sugar spike when they eat like an avocado or something weird like that. It has no carbs, no sugar whatsoever. it's just all individual variants. And it's because they have, they might have an immune reaction to it. So brown rice may actually cause, might be worse on the glycemic index for you than than white rice. The compounds in brown rice, I had to look them up because I totally forgot, are called phytates. And phytates, like phytic acid, bind to minerals. So like zinc, copper, iron, magnesium, niacin, calcium. And when they bind to these minerals, your body now can't utilize them. And so if you're – and it's, you know, I wouldn't worry so much about causing nutrient deficiencies if you live in you know wealthy society and you're eating lots of variety of different food. But if like you have brown rice with every meal – you may be causing yourself uh, some issues with nutrients. But again, that being said, brown rice not only is not healthier, but if I if when I recommend people eat rice, I always recommend white rice, always, just because it's so much easier on the body, easily digestible, far less likely to cause uh, intolerances, far less likely to cause immune reactions, um, doesn't have those anti-nutrient effects. And uh, the good news is, I don't know about you guys, but I think I like the taste of white rice. Oh, way better. Oh, absolutely. Way better. Yeah, yeah, it's way better. Way better. But yeah, if you go to these old cultures, you go to China, who's been consuming rice for a long time, they don't consume they don't brown rice. brown rice. No, no they're no. eating white rice. Now, you see the difference. I think the, uh, what is it, enriched? Is that what they say? White rice that's enriched or non-enriched. Do you know the difference? Is this that's when they throw like the train at it. Yes. So the I think that's it. the biggest difference of like you know making a better choice on on the white or not is getting the ones that are not enriched because what they'll do is they'll add vitamins and minerals to it. Uh, way better for you just to eat it natural in its whole state. So I think I want to say it's enriched is the term they use. Mm. You, baby, I better check that before. Well, anytime something's enriched, that's usually. Yeah, it, it might not be. I'm trying to think like what's on that. But defined. dude, I'll tell you what, man. I think it's enriched. I'll tell you what. I've been so I listen. I listened to that guy, the carnivore diet guy. I can't remember his name. We're gonna have him on the show, so I apologize. But he was talking about. He talks about some of this. So I started doing more, and I've known about some of the stuff. So I've been doing more research, and it's funny. Most many times, not always, but many times, when you have people with gut issues or inflammatory issues or autoimmune issues. They seem to do better, uh, Dr. Sean Baker. Thanks, thanks, Doug. Uh, they seem to do better when they eliminate most, first of all, all grains, uh, dairy, um, and legumes and stuff like that. And it's usually like they do better with like meats and maybe some some green veggies. Although some people respond to to, to those too, but meats usually are okay. And that's because you know animals don't need to have defense mechanisms in their flesh because they can run, they can fight, they can kill you. So plants didn't have that luxury, so they had to evolve creating these things, making them difficult to digest because if you're, you know, if you're animals and you're eating this plant and, you know, fuck, that destroyed my stomach, I'm not going to go back and eat that plant again. Mm -hmm. So lots of plants have those types of things. Cooking them destroys quite a bit of it, which is, uh, again, tackling the whole, that's another issue, the whole like, raw vegan you know eat all your vegetables raw whatever no you're probably better off cooking them for the most part um and that's one of the reasons mm-hmm. next question is from ignknt 14 do you agree with some of the more popular figureheads that say simply eating more can help enhance recovery you know, you know so how many times have you guys heard this what there's, are figure 
Figureheads. What? So uh, I think I know what they mean. How many? How many have, I'm sure you've heard this in the bodybuilding world, Adam. There's no such thing as overtraining. There's only under eating. Oh, uh, okay. You know what okay, I mean? you think that's what she said? Yeah. Oh, figure meaning like figure competitors? No, figureheads is like somebody that represents like uh, like someone who's authority in fitness. So they equate recovery to food. Oh, you've never heard that? No. Have You've heard that, right, Adam? Yeah, oh, absolutely. That's how, very common. How, how, yeah, how much does no, that piss you off? It's funny. No, one of the things I remember seeing a lot of when I was first getting into it is is that people posting videos of there's no such thing as overtraining. Over, the idea of overtraining is overrated and you're just under eating. You're not eating enough. That's like, so that's been drilled into it. And here's the thing. there's there There is some truth to that. A lot of people probably do train too hard and not consume enough food and so that in, in if your goal is to gain in big that you may be missing on nutrients or getting enough calories i went through this as a young boy growing up trying to build muscle i couldn't keep up with the amount of calories that my body was burning so therefore i need to eat more but that is not like it that's too much of an overarching statement to just say super that, simple yeah no it's way more complex than that and and in more cases than not, it's wrong, right? That somebody is doesn't need to just eat more more foods, and and they can keep continuing to train that. No, hard. I mean you can definitely eat too little and inhibit your body's ability to recover. But uh, if you're if you're adequately fed, and your training is wrong because you're training too hard, to, or too frequently, or just too much volume for your body at that particular moment to handle. Simply throwing more food into your mouth uh, won't help very much or at all. In fact, you're probably going to get fat. And, and a lot of the people that I've that I've known that have said this to me were those kind of people who mm. go these crazy bulks, and they're like, "No, man, I just eat more food," and it's like they're thirty percent body fat, and it's like, "Well, I, I see what's happening with all this extra food that you're eating, yeah. and it's not muscle that you're gaining; mm. uh, it's body fat." Food plays a massive role. The quantity of food and the calories that you eat and the amount of macronutrients is important, but so is you know what you're eating in your training. Yeah. Your training is a big part. I mean, what I mean, what would you guys say is one of the reasons, the big reasons why could, people have issues with recovery? You could definitely see that's why that's why this statement is tough, and I definitely don't like the overgeneralization of saying that that's all you need to do because there are some people that I think suffer with this, right? So if you're trying to you know, build, or I, I've seen this more common with like female competitors where they're so used to these hard crash diets where they're starving their body of nutrients and they're sore all the time too. So that could be a combination of both one, them needing more adequate rest or them uh, over training their bodies. Those that could be one factor. And then another factor could also be that they're under consuming nutrients. So they're they're under feeding the body and they're also over training. So the combination of that's causing this major plateau. Yeah, I've seen yeah. a lot of people get because uh, it's like the perfect storm, right? When especially pre contest, because your your training volume is through the roof, you're eating very little. Uh it's pretty common for people to get sick right before a contest or right after a contest. Very, very common. Very, very common. I, I, I think um, out of all my shows, 50% of them, I got sick either leading right into the show or right after the show, mm. for sure. Just from the over, just yeah, pushing but, your body. Yeah, because there's no doubt in my mind, I mean, that, and I've expressed this many times, competing is not healthy for the body, especially when you get into those final two weeks. I'm completely deprived, I'm 100% depriving my body of the nutrients that it wants or needs. I mean, I'm trying to be catabolic, right? So- if you're on a mission to be catabolic for two, three, four weeks in on, in on uh, straight, and then on top of that, uh, training the body really hard, so you're trying to maintain that volume, so you're you're sending that signal to the body to hang on to that muscle that you worked so hard to build over the past six months or whatever it was. So yeah, no, those those signals are are conflicting a bit when you're when you're hitting the hitting the gym that hard, and then also restricting calories. Uh, it's kind of a recipe for disaster, for sure. Here's something else that uh, you know I want to, and I've said this before, but I just want to make clear that recovery does not mean adaptation. Okay, so recovery and adaptation can be two separate things, and I want to say that because recovering is healing from something. Mm -hmm. Adaptation is when your body uh, is trying to make itself stronger so that stress it next time progresses for it. Yes, yeah. it's trying to overcompensate or supercompensate. So when you're working out, you're causing damage to your muscle and recovery starts to happen, but you've also sent a signal to your body 
that tells it to adapt and build, build muscle. Both those signals, although they happen congruently and they happen together, are not the same, which is why I think people confuse them to be the same because they happen kind of at the same time. Like I'm recovering, but I'm also building, but they are different. And we do know, we have studies that show that after a heavy workout, that muscle building signal that we measure through something called protein synthesis or muscle protein synthesis peaks at about 24, 48, maybe maybe 72 hours. So if you hit your legs really, really, really hard on Monday, by on Wednesday, that muscle building adaptation signal is at its peak, but you still may be sore on Thursday and Friday. And that signal, that muscle building signal drops very fast. After it peaks, it starts to go down very, very quickly. So you may still be recovering Friday and Saturday because you overdid it and you're thinking, oh, I'm still sore, therefore I'm still building muscle. Nope. That muscle building signal, not only did it fall after Wednesday, but now it's below baseline because your body will not build more muscle unless it thinks it needs to. And if you're no longer sending that muscle building signal, even if you're recovering, your body has no need to have you be bigger and stronger. Remember, that costs more energy. It costs more calories. I like that you went this direction, too, because this is something that uh, I think for sure was a myth that I I fell for for so many years, and I, I know I taught a lot of people the wrong way because I was always under this impression of chasing this soreness. I always looked at the process of building muscle looked like this. You go into the gym and I used to even say this, like, oh, you don't, you don't build muscle outside the gym. You what you do? I mean, you don't build muscle inside the gym. You go inside the gym, you tear and break down, and then when you go home, you rest and you recover, and that's when you grow and you mm-hmm. build muscle. And there's some truth to that, mm-hmm. but that was that was my truth, and I didn't take into consideration the process of adaptation and how important that signal was to the whole process process of continuing to grow. And so I was completely focused on always trying to break down as much as I could and then trying to feed the body as much as I could to grow. And that's where this myth has been perpetuated from is this idea of we tear as much as we can, we destroy as much as we can in the gym, and then we go home and we rest as well as we can and we feed as much as we can, and that's going to optimize the most amount of muscle. Diminishing returns at that point. Like you're you're playing catch up, you know, to, to being sore. And it's only one metric, you know, regarding recovery anyway. Mm -hmm. So like to to negate uh, the fact that you could be training more f- efficiently and you know manipulate your intensity and you know have have more energy going into your next workout. I mean that's that's like we're, we're talking about you know dinosaur shit. It's so here. funny. There were so many there were signals and signs of, of that recovery and adaptation were separate. So many times throughout my my fitness career, I didn't really put it together till much later. But I remember one instance in particular. I, when I used to go to the gym, so, you know, I, I've been working out in gyms since I was 14, 15 years old. And when I was about 16 and 17, I was really, really, really into it. Like I was dedicated. Like I want to build muscle. And I bought into this theory or dogma that it was recovery. You needed to recover to build muscle. That was what it was all about. And that I didn't understand anything about adaptation. I thought it was the healing process. So I'll never forget. I used to go to the gym. And I'd hammer the shit out of myself. I mean, I do every high intensity technique you could imagine that I could read about in, in magazines, everything from partial reps to supersets and forced <laughs> reps and all this crazy stuff. And then what I would do is if I wasn't lifting weights, I was not moving like purposely. I'd be like, I need to recover. I don't want to compromise my recovery mm-hmm. with any other activity. And I'll never forget. I got a, uh, I had got myself a BMX bike and I had me and my cousin, my cousin got a BMX bike and he's like, dude, let's go right up in the hills. It'll be super fun. And so I said, sure, I'll get one too. And I'll never forget this. I don't remember what day it was, but I had worked out my biceps really, really hard and they were sore as fuck. And so I thought to myself, like, I'm going to rest my arms so that they, they grow. But then my cousin's like, dude, let's go hang out. Let's go, you know, ride our bikes and ride up in the hills, this and that. So the day after and the next few days after we rode our BMX bikes up in the hills. And at this time, I was really practicing my bunny hops and trying to do all these moves, which required me to jerk up on my bar really hard with my arms. And I remember after each day, because we would do this for hours, we'd be out for three, four hours. I remember coming home and I'd be like, kind of crapped out, like, fuck, man, I've been pulling up on that on that handlebar this whole time. Like, I totally wasted that workout because my biceps are never <laughs> going to be able to recover. 
And I used to be religious about measuring my arms. When I was doing that with the bike and lifting weights, my arms grew like I was like a quarter inch or something like overnight. I remember thinking like, there's no way it could be the bike. It had to be mm-hmm. something else because there's no way I'm, 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 you know, compromising my recovery. But that was just a sign to show me that, and I didn't understand it then, that you can send these muscle building adaptation signals even while you are recovering. And in fact, now that we've, we've what we have learned is movement actually facilitates recovery. So if you're in the state where you're having a tough time recovering and you're pushing your body to the limit, sometimes you do need rest, but sometimes what you need is just some movement. Just do some movement. That's why we do trigger sessions in MAPS Anabolic, like move the muscle, stretch the muscle, do mobility work, whatever. You'll actually get more muscle out of it, get better results out of it, and you may find yourself actually recovering faster as a result. Next question is from Beach Cruiser 83 Myth or fact that testosterone is stored in the legs and that a person doing squats and deadlifts will have more testosterone and gains than someone who does I love Bro, this was, so you wanted this question. I wanted this question. Salva did not want this question. That's silly. But I said, we have to talk about this because there is something that uh, I've heard for a very long time and people used to say this over. And this is kind of like the telephone game, <laughs> right? Where a little bit of truth or information gets shared by somebody and then they get distorted over time. And now it's to the point where people think that testosterone is stored in your legs. So it is kind of funny, but I do know where this has come from. And I also think this is grossly overplayed and sold about squats and deadlifts. And that's that we get this spike in growth hormone. Now they've done studies to show that this, there's some truth to this, but it's so minimal and it's not going to be enough of growth hormone factor that all of a sudden you grow yeah. way significant. The bottom line is that when we squat and when we deadlift, it is the best compound movements that we can possibly do because it incorporates the entire body. And so the overall gain of building muscle is going to be significant in comparison to any other exercise. So if you eliminate squatting and deadlifting, you're eliminating two of the biggest muscle building exercises that you could possibly do. That is the biggest factor. It's not that, oh, when you do squats, which you will hear this. I've read articles in T Nation. I've seen guys do stuff on this before where they talk about Mm -hmm. the growth hormone factor that gets spiked. It spikes testosterone too. It does. It does spike it, but it's so insignificant that that's not what makes squatting and deadlifting so beneficial what makes it so beneficial are all the other factors of having to complete that movement so there's there's a couple things on this that i want to touch on first and foremost so exercise resistance training in general does raise or does cause spikes in uh these you know you want to call anabolic hormones growth hormone and testosterone and some exercises cause a bigger spike than other exercises for example like we're talking about, you go do a barbell squat, you're going to get a bigger spike in then growth hormone. And test, yeah, then you want a leg extension or a barbell curl. Now, is that spike building muscle or more muscle for you? Insignificant amount, if at all. Maybe over the course of 30 years, it might add up to you know a pound of muscle. I think what it's doing is it's showing you that the exercise you're doing is producing this, what I consider systemic muscle building signal. And, that's, and the result of that is a spike in testosterone growth hormone. So what I mean by that is when you lift weights, and this is this is true, they've done studies on I this. I see where you're going with this. When you lift weights, you have a localized muscle building effect, which is obvious. That's the target muscle. So if I do a curl, obviously the muscle that I'm mainly sending the muscle building signal to is the bicep. But there is a systemic muscle building effect that happens throughout the whole body. And all exercises are not equal. Some exercises cause a more, a larger systemic effect, and it's probably tied to the amount of muscles that are being active, but there's other factors, the amount of tension and the amount of mm-hmm. weight that you're using and whether it's a barbell How versus- much CNS activation is contributing. All that stuff. So I think, uh, and, bec- and the reason, I know where this is coming from, it's because They've, they've, t- you've heard this before. If you do heavy squats, your arms will grow faster. Right. You know, if you do heavy deadlifts, your, you know, your shoulders will grow faster. That's true, and that's true. Even though you're not directly, because look, let's be honest. Like when I'm doing a squat, I'm not really hitting my biceps. You know, maybe because I'm holding the bar and I'm tense and all that stuff. But if I mimic that tension, you know, on my bicep with something else, it wouldn't produce the same muscle building effect. And it's because these big movements cause not only a local 
muscle building effect for the target muscles, which the prime movers in a barbell squat, for example, are the quads, hamstrings, the glutes, um, and you're getting some low back involvement as well. But there's also this larger systemic muscle building effect, which then carries over to the rest of the body. So now what you notice is, you know, I never, I neglected my legs for, you know, you'll have, you'll hear, hear people saying this. I never hit my legs. I neglect my, my legs all the time. All of a sudden, now that I'm hitting my legs, all of a sudden my bench press is going up. Yeah. My overhead press is going up and everything else seems to be. Hence why we switched over to total body workouts and not splits. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So. Uh, that is a great point because uh, one of the main reasons why we advocate for full body type workouts is the frequency, right? Training more frequently, but it's also this other thing that we won't, we haven't really talked much about, which is this systemic muscle building effect. And when you work the whole body, you're probably giving your body, you're probably causing more of this overall muscle building effect. In the well, whole body. certainly you are, and go- going to Justin's point, uh, probably, arguably, the most beneficial thing is the CNS benefits that you get, which ultimately, in turn, will help you build more muscle everywhere in your body. So think of it this way: you know, somebody who does a squat is, and you've gave the analogy, Sal, which I love the analogy of think of your CNS like your amplifier, think of your muscles as your speakers, and think of you doing a squat versus a leg extension is the difference of you trying to tweak your speakers versus you trying to tweak or fine tune or upgrade your amplifier, right? Mm -hmm. So you squatting is investing in getting a better amplifier. You doing leg extensions is like you getting better speakers. Which one of them is going to create better sound overall? That's right. 100% the amplifier is going to- Anybody who knows sound knows that. Right. (laughs) Understands that you're going to get way more from a better amplifier than Mm -hmm. you you ever can out of just upgrading your speaker. So- so yeah, it's a myth. Testosterone is not stored in the legs. It's created by your testes and your brain. And uh, hitting your legs doesn't release more testosterone from your legs. It just, <laughs> when you do these big exercises, you cause a systemic muscle building effect. Next up is Zelezniak Vera. What is your opinion on clean meat? Meat that is grown in a lab from animal cells. Will you eat it when it's available? <laughs> Fuck or run? No. Fuck no, bro. When are, we, when are we gonna learn our lesson? Never, Why? dude. I uh, I don't care how good it tastes, looks. That just. I mean, if we were, if we had to, like, we we're gonna die. Like the apocalypse was coming and shit. And like, I won't like, even eat a tofurkey. What's, yeah, to, what's a tofu? What's a tofu? It's like a tofu turkey. <laughs> you know, like, is that a real I'm not thing? gonna eat that shit. Is that a real thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. come on, bro. You go. It totally you, is. You got to go in the vegan processed food like freezer section Ugh. when they're trying to make like hot dogs Ugh. and shit out of like. I look at the back like, of those boxes and it's like 50 million dude. ingredients and it's supposed to be healthy. The for scary. You. Can you imagine at like the cafeteria, like you want this mystery meat? You know, the like, scary <laughs> part is if we really think about it, and I'm sure that's why she asked this question. We, where science is now, you could probably make this fake total artificial meat taste like the best bite of filet mignon you've ever had in your life. Well, so they, and that's what there's the argument right there is like, so like if you didn't tell me right uh, side by side test and you cut something that was engineered to, to for the perfect flavor profile as that medium perfectly cut or cut cut yeah. meat or cooked meat of filet mignon, but it's not alive. You don't know that? No, it's living cells. They'll say it's living cells. Well, I don't know, man. Like uh, going through the process of being alive, and then you know, like I, there's got to be a disconnect. So there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, like positive marketing uh, that you can do with this. Like number one, um, we're saving the cows. We're not killing animals. Yeah, Yeah. and that's number one. Number two, the the main number two, we're saving the environment, right? Because we're growing Mm. in a lab. Number three, it's cheaper. Number four, it takes up less space and it's less of a carbon footprint and all these other things. And I get all that. I understand all that. Here's the problem. The problem is if we were to, all of the things that we understand about the universe, all the complex things that we know, the most complex thing that we by far still don't know a lot about is the brain. The second most complex thing that we think we know a lot about, but in reality, we actually there's a lot we don't know about is metabolism, in particular mammalian metabolism. In fact, all animals and plants, the way they convert food into energy is fucking fascinating and we know a lot about it, but there's a lot we don't know. There's a lot we don't know about human metabolism. So, And we pretend like we do. And so when scientists are like, oh, these are stem cells, we're going to grow these into meat, you're going to eat these, it's no different. Right. 
You're that is a level bullshit. of bullshit. They say that before bullshit. actually experimenting, you know, and having like these these labs done ahead of time to, to claim that. Bro, that is a uh that is a level of cockiness that has gotten mankind into trouble for Ever, right, yeah. Where we think we know everything. Oh no, it's not a problem. Feed we it got to the, it. Feed it it's to the, the vegans. Go-to. Feed it to the vegans. Let me know in twenty years. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, it's. Uh, I. You know, I wouldn't do it. I, I look. I. I will say this. I'm not anti-science, by the way. But there is definitely this. You know, s- scientific worship that we start to get into, yeah. especially in modern times and modern Western societies, where it's all about science that we we trust a hundred percent. We don't question anything. And yeah, there, you know, anything that scientists say, we're going to believe the thing is they don't know what they don't know. And when it comes to human metabolism, again, look, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something right now. 15 years ago, 10 years ago, 10 years ago, you know, scientists in that, that studied human metabolism and all that stuff and biology had v- very little knowledge on the microbiome of the gut. That's 10 years ago. Nobody was talking about this shit 10 years ago, right. except for people like Paul Check or whatever. But even they didn't know the science behind it. All of a sudden, now we're learning that the microbiome, holy shit, that's really important. Not only is it really important, but it's so important that without it, you're going to die. Oh, it influences your moods. It influences your neurotransmitter production. Mm-hmm. It Oh, you can pass it on to other people. And, you're, and we can do gut tra- you know, fecal transplants with animals and change their behavior. And, do all mm-hmm. and that's just now. That's now you go back ten, the iceberg right 10 years, 10, 15 years ago, they would have told you they know everything about food. They know what, min, you know, vitamins, minerals, nutrients, proteins, fats, carbohydrates. You can't tell me that we're going to grow meat today with what we know about metabolism today. That is going to be exactly the same as meat or what, maybe it is exactly the same based on the parameters that we know to look at. Like we know to look at protein, fat, carbs, nutrients. Right. And so now we can say, oh yeah, they're identical, but that's because we don't know to look at these other things that we may discover later on. I do think at some point, science will get to the point where we can create and make our own food and it'll be absolutely perfect. But I think we're, we're behind, obviously, mm. for sure. There's so many questions when it comes to nutrition and food that we're still learning. Fuck, I mean, our show wouldn't exist if we knew everything about it. I mean, we, we constantly are bringing new things to light in terms of how nutrition affects the body and what food does to the body and all these weird things that we're starting to learn you know, now. Um, no man, I'd stay away from lab meat. It's, Say it's no funny because Franken meat. Yeah, they so what they they actually did. They actually grew uh, sp- steak in a lab, and the reason why it's not commercial is well, two reasons. Number one, it tastes like shit, so they actually gave it to the scientists to try, mm. and all of them were like, "This is gross." I would yeah. never. It didn't taste like beef or whatever, even though they grew it from the stem cells. It didn't taste the same. It was gross. And number two. I think it cost them something like seven thousand dollars to grow <laughs> one steak. Yeah, because the technology is just so super efficient. Yeah, yeah right? it's so it's so rudimentary. It, you know, compared to where it could be in the future. But that's here's let's, the, let's just feed everybody crickets. You know, it's like <laughs> at uh, least it's good food. for the environment. I, well, protein. I would eat. I would eat that before I ate that for sure. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I would hundred percent eat some processed bugs before I would eat some fake <laughs> yeah. fake ass meat. I'm serious, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like was not pro the fucking cricket chips you guys were eating, but if it was like one or the other, for sure I'm eating cricket chips over fake ass meat. Dude. Well, look, here's what you're condemn- Here's what scientists are competing against. Scientists are comp- in, in. You look at modern uh, biology, modern science, and how they're really studying the body and starting to understand it. It's not that long. It's not that old. It's what? What is it? Like less than a hundred years, maybe, or hundred years? Or, you know, germ theory w- hasn't been that, lo- that th- around that long, even. You know what I mean? Where we've discovered all these different things. So we're contending what science is. You know, on these things is maybe a hundred years old. In the last, you know, twenty or thirty years, has it really started to learn a few things? That is competing with millions of years of evolution. You know, where we evolved in our environment and we co-evolved with our food. In other words, we evolved to be able to consume certain things. Our food evolved to be able to be consumed and all these other things start to happen where, you know, we're competing with millions of years and we think, Mm -hmm. you know, our 100 years of knowledge. It's just arrogant. We're so arrogant that we're like, oh, yeah, we figured out nutrition. Here's some, you know, I went to, God, what gym was it that we were at? City Sport when we walked in and we were talking to the guy. Yeah, yeah. And I look in their case of like protein powders and stuff and you know what they had in there? Soylent. 
Oh, they did. They're selling in the gym now, wow, dude. That's not good. Soylent. Wow. The fucking drink this and never eat food and you'll be absolutely uh, fine, which God I would damn never. You, City just, Sport. They never just dropped <laughs> points in mind. Right? They, they were up there. I was like, yeah. you know, it was. Right next to the Rip Force. Yeah. You, dude, I can't <laughs> believe that. You guys are down there with Planet Fitness now. Come on, yeah. guys. Just like that. Get your shit together. Now, eat real meat. You got to kill it first before you. It's got to be alive first. It's a process. So uh, check this out. Uh, if you go to YouTube, we have a free. Like 30 day workout, all mapped out, all planned out for you. Doesn't cost you anything. Just go to Mind Pump TV on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, set your notifications to on so you can see whenever we post a new video. Don't forget about the new app, bro. Oh, oh shit. my God. It's here. You guys have been asking Great us for, googly moogly for I'll, years I'll now. make sure to mention that in our intro, too. We have a Mind Pump app where you can access our shows. Yeah. You can search for topics, makes it a lot easier. Well, look on the app. Mind, I, yeah, Mind Pump Media. Yeah. App Store. App Store. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.